The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to 90th Youth Group. Uh, today is the Monday, the 12th of February, 2018. Uh, as usual, myself and John are here. Um, so, yes, basically, um, hopefully it's a fun-packed uh, webinar. Any ideas? Idea, any ideas, suggestions, problems? You know, raise a hand, and uh, and we shall uh, endeavour to cover them. Um, just while we're still waiting for other attendees to uh, to join in and so on, I shall give you a quick update on um, new release. So I wanted to get two updates out by today. Unfortunately, we've only made one, but you'll be glad to hear the calendar uh, update is available for download. I've still got, actually got to uh, update the website um, from a, a news point of view. But if you log in, you'll see that 4.02 is now available to you. Uh, so you can uh, you can download that with immediate effect and uh, and give it a run out. I've not had a chance to update the example application. I will do that tomorrow morning. Uh, just didn't get time to get it today. Um, but we can I can quickly show you some of the the particular things. But yes, the uh, the the example app uh, will be released tomorrow. And one of the things uh, that will be is it'll be moved up to version uh, Clarion 8. Currently, the example app is still shipped in Clarion 6, believe it or not. Um, also, CodeJock, uh, I have 18.30 out available. So that update will also be uh, come out tomorrow. So you'll see all the products will uh, get a quick rebuild tomorrow. But the calendar will actually get another rebuild purposely for the example application. And I'm also uh, someone's asked me to look into a particular funny, so that fix might go into, it might be a 403 tomorrow, but it will be a very small upgrade. Okay, so calendar 402, let's quickly look at our history. There we are today. Uh, there's obviously the reminder facility. Um, just quickly jump around I'll just mention the repeating uh, of the reminder icon if you remember from previous weekend uh, previous uh, webinars uh, has now been fixed basically there was an issue where it wouldn't um, replace the built-in reminder icon with your own icon that's been fixed uh, the new reminder facility has been um, now implemented I've done some checks on it and so on and so forth. And that is, um, that's that's quite good. I'll actually show you some uh, facilities on there, which are basically I think are a little better. Uh, definitely uh, enhance the product. And we've also added uh, a refresh uh, option, which somebody, uh, somebody asked for. It wasn't hard to implement, so we quickly put that in uh, at the same time. So a uh, nice easy one quickly show you the refresh if we have a look in here on the calendar just wait for it to open on the option tab you now have a refresh key code and I've put it on the F4 key and just to prove it was working what I did is basically that that forces a refresh of the calendar so currently if you called um, file load records chances are you would have code in there to say doesn't really need to be reloaded because you are still within the the, the previously loaded range so it would it basically it would try to be efficient and it wouldn't reload unless of course you pass it a force flag now the best way of doing your reload would be to do um, the user method refresh contents and that's what the basically the, the the refresh does you can put a key code in when it detects that key code um, has been pressed it will automatically call the refresh contents with a fourth flag which will in turn go off and do some tidying up and then reload the records with again with a fourth flag so rather than put a message on the screen i just put a quick display of when the file load records was being called which of course is one element of that process and when it's called just to prove it was working uh, again without any uh, any flicker or anything or not flicker but any messages appearing on the screen i just quickly 
change a variable, incremented it. So all we did is put an F4 on the template. Okay. And if we go to this, we can see here there's been one, and as you would naturally navigate around, that would cause a, that's caused it. Now, if I press the F4, you can see, hopefully you can hear me pressing the key press, and that is basically the, the refresh going on. So now you've got a, a refresh, should you want it, on the calendar template. So on to the reminders, which we've covered partially in the past. Uh, past weeks uh, as, a, as a quick preview. Now I'll show you the actual main content, if you will. And in this particular example, we have it set to, does let me go into it? Go to the reminders tab. This is using the custom event handling. So it gives you a little tip. So basically, please use the following embed points. Event reminder. That will tell you when one single event is, you know, the reminder is firing for the one single event. Event reminder dismissed, that is that a, 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 an, a, an event, the basically it's been dismissed. So the reminder should be removed from that. That is the same, but the, the event has actually been snoozed. The reminder for an event has been snoozed. Reminder dismiss is where you would actually, via your code, if you were coding all this manually, uh, basically dismiss the reminder. Same with the snooze. The reminders fired would be the embed point where you would start the whole process off. So this is uh, a reminder is now due and it will go and trigger that particular embed point. And we'll cover some of the code here in manual in a, say, well, in a few minutes. And re reminders dismissed is basically, it's like a dismiss all, if you will. So that's one element you've got. Others you've got is the code jock window. And we always have this option, display reminder window um, in the system taskbar. And you've got the disclaimer about it being an SDI. Now that, that disclaimer basically was on all previously because you only really had one way of doing it. The good thing now is, I'm pleased to say, if you're still using the code jot reminder window, which is obviously what you only had up until this build, then your, your your reminders had to be equivalent of SDI. So the window would pop up and so on, and the uh, you would you would basically attach it to your application vein via the reminder extension template you still do all that but if you are handling the reminders yourself or if you're using the new built-in Noantis reminder window it can be mdi and the reminders will still trigger so we've removed the basically the limitation of the reminder window being sdi and the reminder facility being sdi the problem of that was it was the built-in code window it would only trigger in sdi mode but now we're detecting the particular um, callback events, processing them ourselves, telling you what, what happens exactly when, we can do all that um, in MDI. And it works pretty well, if I say so myself. So that's the code shot one, cause custom, obviously not in use, and you've got the new Noantis. And this is where you will put your translations. So for wording, you have all the, the words you would expect for the window. And of course, there are optional variables should you load them into some kind of translator uh, uh, package. So your application is um, go through, run basically through some kind of translator uh, third party plugin. So you could do that there. So you've got your various different wordings for the window and the buttons. You can control the icons. And you can control which buttons are actually available to the end user. So, and there's one of them where we actually demonstrate it. So I'll show you that in a second. And the beep, when the window actually opens, do you want it to give some kind of sound notification? So we'll cancel this one because that is just to be done, handled manually. Let's just make sure that it's still set to manual. Yep, 
handled manually. So for this one, you would do the reminders fired and you would call. Now, because it's MDI, you only want to call the reminders window once. So you wouldn't want it to keep opening on different threads, multiple reminder windows. So I'd say, okay, if the reminder window is not open, then basically go and open it. And you do have to pass it the address of the class. Now, all this looks very complicated. In reality, unless you really do want to implement your own and on the reminder put extra particular facilities, um, then you don't need to do any of this. You can uh, have the built in, you use the built in Niantis one, uh, still have quite a lot of um, yeah, control over it. So, but you would basically need to start the reminder window if it's not already open here. What you would, what you should really do there actually is if it is already open, tell it to bring it into focus and, uh, and pass it to uh, basically some kind of a post event to one bring it back into focus and get it to refresh its contents if you're doing the, the, the job fully i'll make sure the example application does include uh, examples of each of these um when you dismiss the reminder so if we just go here oh actually there's no embed point for that then what it would do here event reminder dismissed it's just giving some feedback you don't really have to do anything i thought this was more more padded out maybe not no let's show you in the other one in the actual cold window so there's our window which would appear now we can knock it around and do whatever we want but it's under this code where you would want to go and snooze so we would say okay we go and find out which one's been selected. And for that, we would call the class the reminder snooze and we give it um, a number of which reminder, the zero based, which is how the code doc documentations uh, indicates how they are. So we follow suit with that, but basically you go and tell it which reminder you want to snooze. So for example, if you had a snooze all, which we have got on here somewhere, then it's a very simple case of we go through all of them and we just keep snoozing the uh, zero index pointer. So basically it would be going to do uh, the, the first reminder, then snooze the first reminder, then snooze the first reminder, because ultimately as you snooze them, they are removed from the actual um, internal reminder queue. Um, Okay, okay. The built-in, no, let's show you the actual built-in uh, Niantis one. So on this particular window, we've got our wording here. And you can see I've changed subject to subject here. We'll say subject webinar and due or, or let's just say late <laughs> uh, we can put icons so I'm going to put an icon on the close button and I'm going to change the window icon to an actual reminder icon and I'm going to hide the open button with some default sound So that's the built-in one. Oh, let's get to a date. There you go. So that's got some um, overdue and so on and so forth. And you would code all the buttons yourself here. So just as we said a minute ago, the snooze all keeps calling zero and zero. So that would snooze them all. And here is the built-in Niantis one. We'll jump to some data. So there it is. The open button is hidden because we said we wanted it to be hidden. The close has got its icon and it's automatically put, changed the word, the text from centered to left justified if it's got an icon. And it's subject webinar late. So basically that's just showing you the actual translations of the, the replacement words, if you will, with the reminder icon. 
So every kind of property within here, if you will, down to the minute and minutes and the overdue and reminder. And if we had two, so if we put a second one in, then reminders uh, and so on is fully uh, parameterized for you to get to in your um, in your application. So I've got to see some questions appear, but I'm just going to see if we've got any questions on the the actual calendar, which would be the obvious one thing to cover in that. So Roberto, you've got a question? Just one second. Hi Roberto. Hello. Caught, caught you on the hop. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. You've got a question on the uh, the reminder. <laughs> I don't know if you caught the, yeah. the very start of the webinar, but this is 402, which is available for download now. Mm -hmm. Except I haven't paid for it. So, Except, it's oh, well, okay. not available <laughs> to me yet. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, drop, me, drop me an email after. <laughs> um, listen, I was uh, doing a webinar on Saturday, on the Spanish webinars. Okay. And there was one of the girl programmers she's from uh, germany okay and she was trying to get the calendar um working with a table i got a second yeah. just let me get this right so it was a german developer attended the spanish webinar to speak about the english product yes she's she's <laughs> actually from spain right, so okay. she knows spanish <laughs> and she knows german <laughs> right okay very good <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, she's like, it works on mine. She had an older version, three point something or other. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, let me try it on mine. And I, I had 4.0 and I, and I was just showing her how to do it because I thought, let's just do it from the start. And I couldn't get the thing to load up the events. And oh. the more I tried, I, the more frustrated I got. Finally I said, ah, let's just do it manually. I'll load him up, you know, but with the table, it doesn't work. So somewhere along the line, it, it broke. <laughs> Uh, um, what, what, so what what settings? What um... using a table? Okay. If you grab your Calendar Pro, uh, yeah, um, I think there's one that uses the table. Uh, the list the the list control. Okay. Do we not have an example in there, that? Yeah, there's okay. an example using the list control, and it doesn't work either. So I'm like, oh, it must have broke. So link to browse here. Hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> First <laughs> exactly. You get that the one. list, but you don't get the events. Well, let's go. To, we have to. I saw you are correct. Uh, I didn't realize <laughs> that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's broken. Uh, I don't know when it broke, but it broke somewhere. Okay, I am just I putting that on the. 4.02 is still broken, so. <laughs> Let's schedule now because I wasn't aware of that. So. Uh -huh. um, won't be a second, just adding it here as we speak. Mm -hmm. And here I was, oh, it works, it works. And, and I'm like. <laughs> Get it to work, and I'm like, well, let's just do it manually. I've always done it manually, and it works that way. So let's just do that. So we did it. We we did it that way. But uh, one of the things we we weren't a, by default uh, the uh, what's it called the ID. You have a record ID, mm -hmm. and you have a, a schedule ID. And if you tell it to do a schedule ID, let's say one, you don't get anything. Um, you need to have a space for the default schedule ID, or not a space, but a blank. Is that correct? In, in where are we looking? Sorry. Um, just for the, the for the left. left. No, you should be able to, uh, if it's linked to a list, you should be able to set it blank. I wonder if that's the actual problem there. Let's have a look at it the settings. Be, it needs to be blank. So we need to go to, sorry, data source, 
Um, the calendar hasn't got. Let's just check the schedules. Go straight past. Schedule well, not required. Yeah. Okay. So right. data saw. And when you and when you do that, the main schedule needs to be blank. It can't be a number or it can't be, you know, whatever you want. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that, that, that it would definitely have to be blank. Because, right. ah, so there, there, that shouldn't be. Um, actually, that's not quite true. You could, you could leave that, but let me just try that. Right. Nothing. Hmm. Okay, well, it's definitely, I, well, not definitely, that's not quite right, but <laughs> I think it's definitely going to be linked to that, or I, I strongly su yeah. suspect it's going to be linked to the schedule. Right. We all went to a manually loaded, and so we all forgot about doing a, a list. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you are better rather than using the, um, the the list to build it yourself. So add view schedules blank blank, which will give you just a default. Uh, right, but it used to work. Oh no, agreed. It should it should come back. So there's no problem on that. Just trying to find what what it would be. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I've noted it down there. So let's see that. So in the loading. There, let me take that out. Let's browse. Um, no. Okay, well I've got it. I've got a list, and like I say, I'll be updating the example tomorrow, so I'll take a quick look at that. It's on my it's on my backlog now, so uh, yeah, that will get done. All right. No, nope, thank you for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so got other questions? I'm just gonna. I'll leave the. I'll just. I'll mute yourself, member Berto, and then you need to come back. Just jump straight back in again. So, Bill, 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 Bill. Um, let's open the mic. Hi, Bill. Oh, hey, Andy. Hey, everybody. I like to I, I just, people on the hop. <laughs> I, I caught right at the tail end of you saying you were updating tomorrow. And I, my question was, one, is that for the 18.3 of code job? That's what, yes. Basically, there'll be the view update for the calendar today, 402, which is the new refresh alert key, which is really simple to implement, but it's a, a refresh alert key, uh, should you want it, the um, reminder facility and the fixed, the reminder icon. So yeah, I caught, I caught that part. I just did very, very, very beginning of the webinar I missed. Yep. And, and and did you mention anything about chill cat? No, you didn't miss that. So it's no problem. So I've got see, I've got two questions. So basically, tomorrow there'll be a rebuild of the whole suite. Now we don't. Um, if, if if we say it's just the the cold job one, so uh, implementing eighteen point three compatibility, I will um, put that into the actual main common class and the library. Which, which obviously feeds the whole suite. And then if it was just that, I'd do a rebuild of the entire suite, but not increment the numbers because all I'm really doing there is just implement, you know, implementing the number for, uh, for, for, uh, for just for that reason. So I'd just do a rebuild uh, and just say, go and re-download. Re -download. But in, in that each individual product, I'm actually getting a bit of an update. I might, I might bring a... a a plus one out to each one of the products but that will be tomorrow so the 18.3 compatibility will be there tomorrow and right on the tail of that and again i can't see why not tomorrow if you want the truth will be your um the the uh, ftp class um so i just didn't make the deadline for today but um yeah i can't see why you wouldn't get that tomorrow if it's not tomorrow it'll be, it'll be by, by wednesday your time by wednesday morning your time i should say um yeah you should be able you should be able to get that now 
it will be the base class um, and so on and so forth and we have to knock it around a little but it'll be enough to for us to get going and build upon so you know me and you you, you give me your exact uh, requirements and i'll knock an example up for that uh, basis of the ftp is quite simple and so on and so forth you know drag files and put files very very easy you know get files and put files but um yeah we can do the example it's more the class which uh, obviously is, is in progress at the moment so normal example is just like I say get and put take it that's oh. the type of thing you'll be doing and yeah that, that's that's all i really need it for anyway yeah and it is a majority to be fair so there's every chance you'll get that tomorrow uh, on the heels of the 18.3 update and if it's not by by wednesday morning your local time you should have it then as well anyway so it's you know it's, it's so close I'm not saying okay, we won't have to build upon it I'll wait till Thursday to update it. I appreciate oh. it. Thank you. Oh, no, no, I appreciate it. And like I say, we might have to build upon it. And you say, Andy, can you knock us the example of this? And that's that's for the good of the community, and I'll, I'll put it into the thing. But, uh, but yeah, at least the, the, the core functionality will be there, and that's the main thing. Um, one other thing, actually, which uh, it's not common knowledge. So um, thing, in the next few, well, technically it'll be weeks now, actually, not months, Um in the probably in the next well maybe touching a couple of months but in the next few weeks um another person's being added to niantis uh explicitly to get both the classes uh, more classes done and then you'll be glad to know the help oh, yes. oh, sorry, uh -huh. sorry. Yeah, no no you're jumping in but it's purposely <laughs> for that it's for the classes and to go straight on the back of that will be the documentation for those classes but in a more meaningful uh, using i don't know a doctor explain i don't know if anyone's ever used it so it'll be shipped in um, pdf format and chm should we need it uh whichever you know whichever i decide to go with or, or both in the installer but yes basically uh a number, a number of team members uh, joining us and that's their first tasks to uh, to get them so the chill cat content will dramatically speed up um in the i'll say months because they're gonna have to you know uh, get to speed with it but they, they they join us within the next um six weeks part-time start with full-time after that and um and yes basically uh each week we should see a lot more in fact it'll keep us very busy well great i appreciate that okay um so that's, that gives us those two questions. What have we got? We've got David, a question. So let's just jump to, to David. Can't see the question, actually. Oh, report control yeah. question. Yeah. Yep, fire away. Here we, um, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm back still on my quest here. for. So I'm trying to uh, make report control mimic access, you know, Microsoft's access. Oh, yes. Program. Um, I have a client that's got a bunch of access database stuff that we pulled a lot of it over into SQL, but there's still quite a bit over in access. Mm -hmm. And so, but they're, it's really just the capabilities, you know, of access that they like using. Right. But, you know, trying to pull that functionality into Clarion has been quite a little challenge. So what, a, what, what type of things? I mean, how are you, lo first of all, how are you loading the data? Well, I've tried a bunch of different ways. <laughs> um, you could and find that direct seems, to access. I tried that. You know, that's one method. And that seems to work pretty good. It, it's really, um, access has the capability to, to load large amounts of data, you know, very fairly quickly. Right. So you can go in and open up a, a table of theirs that has, you know, 800,000 records in it. And it'll open up right away and show you the, the data. And then if you want to be able to filter that data, they have you know drop downs that you can pick you know like all the the, the uh, content yeah the content and and it's even at eight hundred thousand records it's really fast right you know it, it comes up with a list pretty quick you pick on it it filters them um and it, I don't know of any way to, I've tried mimicking it a bunch of different ways but just this the raw speed alone of just getting the you know getting the access to that much data. Mm. Yeah, we need, we need Jeff Robinson's indexing stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. Because he said he was going to take over that. <laughs> um, well, I mean, obviously the fastest I can think of, never tried it with, you know, with access tables and those type of uh, 
content, but the fastest is going to be data bind. And, okay, bind, and bind it, now. yeah, and bind it to Access itself. So you actually using the Access or you know the engine to get the data into the port control. Now that's only get you the data in, and I'm not sure what the load speed would be like. I mean, if you want to pass us a file, unless it's got confidential data in, um, I can you know um, take a look for you, um, and we can we can try it here. But basically. That that should be your fastest way of getting to the data, but then you want the 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 column unique values across the top. Now there is a function in the class, but it's going to go and pass all the row values, so it's going to be a slow and on eight hundred thousand. It could be could be quite slow, especially if you're going to do each column, which of course you would want to. And that's uh, kind of what it looks like. Yeah, you get the yeah you know I can load like ten thousand records in. Which is you know small. They're doing eight hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Mine can you know in the data binding, I can load in about ten thousand in four seconds. Um, but then if you add in the the column sorting, you know where it's actually building that that list of data. Yeah, then not, it's about well, not, it's not sixteen sorry. seconds. Yeah. Filtering or or searching. Yeah, that, that, right. Yeah. yeah, the in the in line. Well, right. ultimately that's that, that's that adds, code rather than the code dot control, you know, the binding code or anything like that, that's our code. The, the, the loading speed, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything about because basically it's, we're at the mercy of both the ODBC engine to access and the... Well, now, um, these are SQL tables, like, so they've got them in access right now, but I'm trying to get them to SQL, you know, so I don't oh, really want not... to use the access. I, I really want to get them out of access and into our program. Got you. Right Sorry, now, I thought you was actually opening the access MDB. MDB, I, MDB. Well, I am because I'm forced to, you know, because they insist on using it. Right. <laughs> but okay. the ideal goal would be to, you know, take that data out of access, put it in SQL, and then I don't have to use access to access the data anymore. But if I can't mimic what they're doing in access with SQL, that's where my challenge is. You know, every time I try to take the data out of access and put it into SQL, I've tried that a few times, you know, then they can start complaining, well, where's the speed? Where's the yeah. filtering? Where's the, you know, it's like, well, yeah, I'm <laughs> trying, to, trying to get it as close as I can, but I, so far I really haven't, but I took another dive at it this last weekend and I thought, you know, this is, there's got to be some way to at least mimic this thing. Well, last week we covered about adding the row and uh, putting the, basically populating the group. So did you do the that? Did you do it that way? If you're not, I mean, no, I did the data binding one on this one first. Data binding to SQL again would be fast. Yes, yeah. you know. I yeah, I did the data binding to SQL. Yeah. It does about four seconds to ten thousand records. Right. But then, like I said, then when I add on the filtering, it takes it up to sixteen seconds. Yeah, that's for ten thousand records. And I think, well, now I'm outside of that. You know, they're doing much larger data sets, and I'm. If you issue a SQL, so let's say you've got column A, column B, column C, column D. Uh, I'm just mm -hmm. going to leave the calendar open a second because I've missed a couple of questions to do with uh, calendar, so we do need to revisit that in a second. But let's say you, in report control, you've got column A, B, C, and D, and you want the unique values. And of course, could be quite a few permutations. You know, for, you've got to do it for each one of the uh, the columns and so on. Then. Right. Um, could you do a select unique, uh, select, sorry, select distinct uh, for each one of those and bring them back into result sets? Uh, what speed does SQL bring it you back in? Well, um, so that, that's path, kind of the class. That's kind of the, that's kind of the thing here. At first, I'm like, uh, well, first to get the data in, you know. So I've got the, the four seconds that I've got to deal with, you know, just for the ten thousand records versus the you know they're doing eight hundred thousand almost instantly, so there's a there's a change right there. You know that kind of has to happen. I mean, I, my first thing is, do I load them all in? You know, and try to in the data like that data binding. Right. You're not really going to have much of a choice unless you put some kind of um, some kind of you know uh, limit on there. So you only say, you yeah, know, some kind of filter, right? Yeah, so you only get in the first n number of thousand, but then you're into the whole world of uh, doing your own page loading, if you will, for the SQL engine. And I mean, I think you could. 
you're going to run into problems with that, to be fair. Yeah, when you do, yeah, the page loaded. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of a, if you, if you did a page loaded, I mean, that seems to be the only way of our real hope, because otherwise you do have to go extract the data. Yeah. Right, I mean, it just takes too darn long to so, extract that much data. I was going to say, but in the, SQL, so take Clarion out the equation, take Kojok out of the equation for that same matter, and just open Management Studio. If you do your select column A, B, C, and D uh, from table, uh, you know, basically to match what you, to match access. If you select mm -hmm. those, how long does that SQL query take to build the results? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Because that's got to be your starting point, and then you can work from there. As because uh, I think that's going to be the challenge. I mean, if you have even if if you're doing that with SQL, if I try to load all of that data into memory, it's just going to take a long time. There's just no way around it, right? I mean, there's no mm. in report control. If you've got to have all the data in, you know, if you do the data binding or the manually loaded method, you still need the data in the first place. So it's yeah. Relevant. So I'm going to need the entire table kind of thing. And anytime I get to an entire table, I'm kind of, you know. I'm out of luck, I think, already. Yeah. Because there's just no way to load a million records into a browse instantly without doing a page loaded or something like that. No, mm, that's no, not really. So so I guess the thing would really be is you'd have to do the page loaded. You have to put some kind right? of some some kind of mechanism in place yourself to emulate, just like a Clarion browse does, you know, with a million records right. and you're only really loading, you know, thirty, forty, fifty at a time, that kind of thing. Right. Now to do a, I guess that would be so. If I'm starting off with that method, would be the, would I start with a just a Clarion enhanced browse? Would that be the? I mean, if you're going to take this, hmm. you know, I, I'll worry about like the sort search sort, you know, building that little list well, of all that, the that you could do by a select distinct. So you could use a SQL qu query or, or multiple site distinct, but you could use a SQL query to get your distinct values and you go and populate the queue yourself manually with those values, giving you the best of both worlds. So so that, that could be done. Of course, you're at the mercy of how fast SQL do. And SQL's pretty fast, but you would still be at the mercy of how fast SQL would bring you back those distinct values. Putting them into a queue really wouldn't take that long. Yeah, and I think I can probably even, you know, like um, maintain that distinct values in the background if I have to. Well, you know, so I, be I can kind of keep that. putting yourself into I, a bit of work, though, to be fair, but you, you could do it. Yeah, I was thinking, well, I could do that. I mean, I have callbacks and stuff that right now, you know, every record that goes in and out is you know, oh, going through the callback good. system. Yeah. So I could I could maintain a background guy, you know, that every time you add a record, change the record, delete a record. It maintained that list, you know, okay. those lists for me. So you wouldn't have to do the SQL query. All you would have, all you would be doing there is basically populating the uh, b b the yeah. queue for that particular column, right. and so on. Right, out of, directly out of the table. Yeah. So it's just the thing. That that's doable. Yeah. So you could have that. Um, it's a matter of passing that, or uh, there's probably a method. Let me get the method for you. Because I, I think what I was really trying to get my head around, because I said I keep bouncing between all the different methods <laughs> and well, trying to figure it out. And first. really, the bottom line is I've got so many records. All the other methods, except for the page loaded, just won't work. No, I mean, to be fair, I, I you're not going to emulate it instant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It's just hard you're not going to emulate that. that because you're you, the, the, the lowest common factor denominator you've got in that from in my mind is yeah. sql building the results and bringing it back to you yeah, then you've got the over it, it of putting it into the report control or putting it into a queue and then the queue going into the report control you probably wouldn't you probably just bypass and go straight into the report control but you've still got that overhead between the two right. between sql getting the results to you and you putting them in but because the, the ultimate SQL guy loads the stuff out pretty quick. I mean, he can load you know ten thousand records out in a couple seconds, but then you still got to get that. Yeah. Now it's in a queue, you know. And then you'd have to load that queue into the report control. Yep. Populate, and that's going to take a few seconds anyway. So you're kind of back down to just getting it out of SQL with the data binding, you know, at that rate. But you now are. again, probably the, probably slower to be fair. Yeah. Slower at the data binding, you think, or slower at the 
I know the, the data bar. Sorry, it's slower at the uh, you put no, in the, the ultimate manual. Well. Yeah, so, I got yeah. you. That would actually slower. Okay, that was the method I was going to try to see if it was any faster. But the I, data binding would be faster than the yes, because you're back on the other method. The queue structure is going straight into the memory of the report control. So the fastest, if you wanted to get the entire result set uh, loaded, then your fast, fastest mechanism, without a doubt, is the data binding. Okay. But once you get over, let's say, 10,000 records, that's just really, I mean, you know, you're, you're, oh. unless you get, you know, you just can't get them in fast enough is the problem. So I guess that is goes back to the page loaded. Yeah, I mean, CodeJock does offer, but not for, not for data binding, it does offer a facility of this virtual mode, but it's what, what it wouldn't really help for your uh instance anyway your circumstance but what it does is it lets you add basically blank roles if you will so you can say okay i'm going to need uh 800 000 roles so basically give me the equivalent of what you think the thumbnail that you know for your scroll bar and so on i'm going to need 800 frank, uh, blank roles 800 000 sorry i should say uh blank roles so it does that and then as you go merging up and down it would want to tell you where where it is and you basically paint at that moment in time that data so you're only really painting over the top of the uh, the current set um but it, it, it's more hassle than it's worth for you because you're still going to need where you are in your overall result set as to go and get that to put, to basically paint over the report control um, at runtime it's it's not going to it's, it's going to be a lot of work and you're not going to get any speed increase out of it because you still need the whole result set to know what you're painting in the first place mm -hmm. so n none yeah. of that would help you the, the fastest you're going to get is the data binding if that's not going to be fast enough for you as you say you're going to have to rethink the solution now of course clarion's good and could be good for that uh, with its page loading so you could go take a step onto that um, and the thing that you don't get with the page loading is you lose some of that other functionality, like you know, the sorting, the the grouping. Well, of course, the, because it doesn't know the whole result set. Right, um, it's filtering, and that's the dilemma here is <laughs> trying yeah. to get you know trying to get both out of out of some, I, and that's why I can't. I'm really you know, the access one. I look at that and I'm just thinking, how in the hell did you guys do this? You know, this is a you got it in there really, you know, you got access to your table extremely fast, and then you've also got all these searches, you know, that are really fast. It's just really a, a tricky, you know, how, how they pull it off, I'm not really sure. No, I'm trying to think myself, to be honest. Um, they did a good job, whatever they did, you know, I mean, I mean, they've got other things that needs to be done, but, you know, as far as data <laughs> access, though, it's pretty darn good, you know. And filtering and sorting and you know searching for things and um, yeah, because you, you want the full you want you you want the basically the, the full functionality you want the sort the the grouping so on and so forth you want the, right, and the you want the report and, and the filter and the inline filter yeah. as well yeah. yeah the inline filter you can do a workaround on like I say you can either maintain your own queues or just upon request. Uh, rebuild the distinct values for all the columns. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Uh, so that's that's something you you how you could work around that to emulate the speed, but without actually loading it until like you know, uh, without loading it all in and then passing it, so to speak, which is what currently happens. So hmm, you you could do that, but not the grouping. If it's on a a page loaded, then it can only group the data it can see. Unfortunately, yeah, that makes sense. Huh? So you'd have to, yeah, if you were doing grouping, you'd have to have them in there. Huh? Exactly, yeah. The sorting, you could intercept, and of course, the, the match the keys to uh, only allow sorting on the, the basically matching keys, so you can see when they put a, a particular sort order, you switch the key underneath the surface, so you get the emulation of, you know, the speed and so on and so forth. So you could, uh, you you could with a bit of work emulate the, um, the 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 sorting both from the report control at the front end and the and the back end as long as you've got matching keys and so on so that you could get around that but you, there's no way around the grouping it can only group what it can see. Mm -hmm. hmm. I was going to do this, unless this you is, this is Bill Andy yeah uh, Bill Rollins I, I've got a 
One, one thing I, I'm curious about, and, may, and maybe it goes along with what David's asking, is uh, back at the uh, CIDC, you, the, Jeff uh, did a uh, demonstration of uh, uh, some kind of a filter technique that he had. And uh, I was kind of hoping to see it out as a third party product. Was it, it a SQL like. group? Was it a SQL uh, thing? I think, he, I think he was even doing it on Clarion files. I think he was uh, doing more of an indexing <clears throat> kind of a scheme for fast search kind of thing. Thing was, was unreal. That? Okay. And, you know, and when you're dealing with, you know, like in my case, I deal with, a, I, I keep a million plus records in some people's com systems for parts files. Uh, and when you can do those type of searches, it, uh, it, it, it was just a tremendous looking product. And then, uh, but then it turned out it wasn't a product. It was just a demo of uh, what he was doing, which didn't make any sense. Okay, so I'm just making a note, putting it on my basically on my on my schedule. But so it's research, and it was who was it, Jeff? Do you remember who it was? Oh yeah, that's that one. I'm He's the guy that, that I, I always thought he worked for CapeSoft, but apparently he doesn't. Uh, I believe he's in Australia. I was going to say, is it Spillane then? Pardon me. Oh, it's Jeff Robinson. Jeff what Robinson. I was telling. Jeff Robinson's search engine. Um, he was showing it off at. In, in, uh, yeah, the thing was incredible. Yeah, it was. And the thing is that he wasn't going to try to sell it. He he actually uh, licensed it over to Bruce, and that's why Bruce needs to get going on it. But I don't know how, how far along he's gotten. I've kind of asked him a couple times, but he's like, yeah, "Oh, wow, well, it's still in the back burner," but. You know, he doesn't seem to be doing much with it, but hopefully he, he, he will. He doesn't. Maybe he doesn't realize how how big of a seller that would be with the people that have, especially when you run in peer to peer type networks. Uh, it, it would definitely be a big uh, big boost. Yeah, anything. I mean, I, it's probably quite a bit of work to get it to be kind of functional with the template. That's the problem. And Bruce is kind of busy doing other stuff, but uh, I don't know. I guess it's in good hands. <laughs> if it's I mean, if it's licensed, to, if Capesoft's licensed it, then it's going to be very you know, hands are a little tied, and I wouldn't want to really go and encroach on on any of that and try and you know uh, emulate. But that's but if they do come out with something, uh, then they're happy to make it report control compatible, so um, we can uh, basically. Take the results. Yeah, no, I was just I was just throwing that out there in case yeah. you know, I had missed something, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, it, it had to do with some kind of real fancy indexing. Uh, mm -hmm. He created his own indexing into a binary so file. You could do sound X and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it was. I thought it was going to be a really boring, um, you know, <laughs> seminar or whatever it was, but it actually was really, 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 really interesting. I mean, it was. And we have really good. interesting. I, mean, I watched it from, from here because I couldn't go down to Florida this year. I watched it online, uh -huh. and I, I was ready to pony up the money to buy the, yeah. <laughs> buy the template. Yeah, but with I SQL, told, I told Jeff a, a couple times, I said, you know, we need that. We need that now. And he's like, yeah, I don't have it. I, I'm going to let Bruce hold of it and do it. Well, here's the thing. On, on basically, okay, you know, you're, to go back to this, if, um, on on that one for Jeff Robinson's uh, thing, if anything is is released, then I'm more than happy to um, uh, bolt that into uh, the report control. You know, that's not a problem because it's it'd be a very good en enhancement. Uh, David, can we just come back, revisit back this in a second? It's just one of the other questions the guy has to leave in sure. ten minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Sorry, really. Yeah, no, sorry about that. No, no, no problem at all. Okay. Uh, so where are we, Kevin? Kevin, let's open the mic. Hi, Kevin. Hi, good morning. Thank you. Morning. Uh, sorry um, about that. Just got the message. Before you left Calendar Pro, um, yeah. I have a today button on my calendar, and if you can go into Calendar Simple, that's just the the button I use. The screen I use. Yeah. 
Oh, well, not that. I actually, is that part of your template, though? That's part of your oh, that's part of the, sorry, the um, date time pick, uh, the date picker. So you just have a yeah. button saying now. I, sorry. Today. And I'm using set, I'm using select daytime. And I have the t clock, I have today clock, no, no schedule ID and comma keep view true. Yep. And if I'm in the month view and I'm, you know, in January, March, whatever, doesn't matter where I am, I click today, it stays in the month view and goes to today. If I'm in the day view, it doesn't matter where I am, I click it, it goes to today in the day view. But if I'm in the week view, it goes to today, but always reverts back to the day view. Okay, let's have a quick look. And we'll do it on simple. So it's almost like it's not honoring the keep view parameter when you're in the week view. So I sent you the piece of code if you just want to copy and paste that. I'm in the simple calendar and I just put a today button on it. Okay, let me just cut that. Yep, no problem. Okay, so we'll put a. And I just tested in your, your sample app and I get the same uh, results. <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to stand, unfortunately, for your report control enhancements that I asked for, but that's okay. Um, that's okay because they, uh, they, they're not quite released yet, but oh, we will. Um, okay, we, so you, you get a pass on this week. Okay. No, no well, there's a, a, a number. Basically, uh, yeah, there was a, a number. We got the calendar out, and there's still the chill cat and the report control. And then I noticed, uh, I think it was. Uh, one of the users, David, uh, pointed out that 18.3 had been released, and I, I hadn't realised, to be honest. So that also needs to be uh, jumped up. But okay. you know, they'll be they they they'll be released by next week for you. So you know, we might okay. have to work one of the uh, you know the block thing together during the webinar. But that's no problem. We'll do that first thing. If you jump on mine and and just raise your hand straight away, we'll make sure we cover that first. Right. Okay, so paste your code there. Okay, so calendar pro. So we're looking at um select daytime. Select daytime, put today, comma clock. So comma comma true. And then true, uh oh um, no, no schedule. The third no schedule be and true. And then true to keep it retain. Yeah. And then put calendar pro dot show day today. Now why have you got the show day today? Uh I thought that had to be done if you're not on, if you're in November, you have to show show today. Hmm. No? I'll tell you what, let's, that I'd reverse that. Let's just do, try it just one. Okay, maybe that's my issue. I, I thought you had to do a show day to get to actually go to that day properly. Well, you might be right. It's, um, you know, so much going on in my head, but okay, let's jump back to, I still want it in day view to start with. I know we're going to think, but we'll, we'll jump down to that day. So we go to today. So that's going to navigate you to today. So that's taking okay. you to the, the 12th. And right. it happens to be just round about where we Oh, and then now, 5 o'clock. So if I'm on the 26th at 5 a.m., and I do now, it's going to take me to, and it's highlighted that. So let's go for a week view, but this is a full week. And today, Actually, is doing that. Well, right, but go to another. Yeah, go to somewhere. Yeah, go today. So that's that's honoring. So you're staying. It's staying. Okay, so let me get rid of my show day real quick and try it. So let me try in working week now. Working week week mode technically still is day view because you're looking at this view. So, um, now that's yeah, not so retaining. Go, yeah. That's not retaining. That's still in day view. Right. Okay, so what would you have expected it to stay in week view? In the working week view, yes, I would have done to be fair. But uh, now here's the thing um, this will sound absolutely crazy, but in the calendar, you have day, you've got the week. Truly, the three modes are day, week, as you see, like that, a month. They're the three modes. The actual support more, as in working week and multi-column, uh, full week, multi-column, so you've seen it like so. But these are nothing more than day view on steroids, if you will. They're still, they, they, they give you the unique equate for them, but this view from a technical point of view is still a day view because you're looking at 
the day contents. So okay. that isn't day contents. You're looking at summary. Obviously, a yeah, month. Full, week, full week does seem to stay in full week mode. So that's yeah. Fun. But we don't use that very often. No, no. I, very, that one, very few people do. I, I, I don't even have that turned on in mine, I'll be honest with you. Um, so basically, you, you're right. There, that, I would have expected that there. Let me just go back to working week, which is the equivalent of a day view. It's kind of irrelevant. Go to today and it's put it back into day view because at the core, there is only actually three um, free, free molds. So let's just see what we can do for you. So let's... Um, uh, do, 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 do. Curve view hash, never really use them, would be calendar pro get view type. So let's get that. That will give you the separate equate back. So working week and uh, working week, full week mode, basically, where they're all still technically day views, it would actually still know the difference between them. And then okay. let's just do calendar. I know there's a, uh, an issue here which you're not going to be able to do anything, but let me show you what, what we can do. Set view type, and we will just pinch what we had before. Okay. So what we're going to do is take a copy of what view we're in now, mm -hmm. let that do its switching, and then put us, put us back again. So... In the calendar, we'll put ourselves in this mode here, but we do want it to, to be working week. So we're down here somewhere. God. Is this just winding me up? No, I see. I seem to be okay. Yeah, okay. Day mode, and then we're on those days. Right, and we're further down. There you go. Go to today. And it's put and you back. You can see it, but I, I can actually see a flash on my screen where it goes into single day mode and you, then goes back you will into do. Mode. You won't be able to, there's two things. There's the flash, and I, we, I don't know if it came across in the webinar, but you, we got the flash here, though. Uh, there's two things. And uh, one is it doesn't have the highlight bar is still at the top. And that's because it will go to the start of the working day. And the working day is nine. So I've it scrolled down to correct because technically what, what the uh, select day time does is calculates the slot number for where the current time is, which is obviously this one here, and scrolls it down manually mm -hmm. down to the correct one. So it's you were taking a copy. We're in uh, working week mode on these dates down here. And then we say, okay, today, what it's going to do is take a copy uh, working week mode or so many day mode there then it's going to scroll which will select today then it will scroll down to the time and if it was just in day mode single day mode you would see that that without the other um, set view uh, set uh, view type would work we saw the highlight bar work before and so on but when you do set view mode that's that view type, it automatically scrolls you to the start of that day. Uh -huh. So, and that's why you're seeing it scroll to the correct one, but then it's automatically selecting uh, higher up. Now, you have got an option. I don't know if it's in here. Automatically scroll to start of day. Let's turn that off, see if that helps you. So we'll have that same week there. Today, yeah, it's still the highlight bar. So it's, it's from a scroll point of view, it's brilliant. But the only other thing you'd be able to do is emulate that scroll. But you're still going to have the flicker. Huh. There's no lazy display or anything like that? or No. No, I mean, I'll quickly open this up. Uh, and, uh, well, yeah, I guess hiding and unhiding the control that would just be as bad. <laughs> uh, I'd rather, I it's like not that. too bad because I actually, um, I actually do a load records afterwards because I need to make sure our data is loaded properly because if they were, you know, if they're moving around. So I, the flicker is not so bad, but I, now that it doesn't jump, I mean, now that it stays in the view I want it, it's a kludge, but 
do you think you would change your your class to respect the view? Um, it should, yeah. I mean, basically, that should the I could I could trap that. Just having a quick look here. Um, does that keep view equals that? It's taken a, a, a copy of that. I would have expected that to still actually kick in. Yeah. I'd have expected that. I'll put a quick. Did you forget to do your set in back to what it was? Uh, under condition. Okay. Oh, actually, no, I'm taking a copy and it's not doing it. Okay, well, so you're that's not. Why the class. Yes, yeah, so that is a bug in the class. That should have it. So you shouldn't, because that the very first line in the class here, let me. Take a look for you there. The very first line in the class here you can see is it's getting view type, but it's not doing anything with it. So that's a bug. Um, I wonder Oops. here. <laughs> so I, I wonder here, okay, if we could. Hmm. Tell me when you got to uh, go and we'll. Uh, We'll, we'll call time on this, but yeah, let's just curve view hash. I'm not sure that's going to be needed. You do have to if five da, 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 da. I'll comment that one for now. So that's going to do that for you. That's going to change the show day. If we've got a time, which we have, so. So it's going to be get the cell number of a particular time, which is clock. Then we're going to scroll to it. That then change, it's these two lines which change your highlight bar. Okay, yeah. Okay, and if I miss it four words, just skip that for now because that is only to do with. Um, the schedule, yeah. So we can skip that, and I'm just going to take the populate and redraw off, which might be some of the flicker. And at the moment, we're not doing anything with the curve view. So, I'm going to show today. Calculate cell number, scroll to the cell number, and basically change the highlight bar. Let's have a look at what that will do for different modes, because our other code does have a set the view type into day view mode, which is zero. But here we can see it switched us into that mode. So if I'm on there, it's automatically going to put you back to that mode. That's without a redraw, populate or redraw. That is just a straightforward. It will force it into uh, that, that, that particular mode. So let's see if we can, under here, put that back in. But I think you'll still get your flicker. But let's take a look. You left the self. You have to do a oh. calendar program, not so for the get you get you yeah. type. Of. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Not that I'm paying attention. <laughs> so, so yes, basically, yeah. You see, not as much flicker because you haven't got the. So that's that's probably better for you but you're still going to get that up there. And that's because when you basically switch in view type, it will put you back to the start of the working day. And if I want to scroll it, oh, maybe I could put the scroll after that. Okay. I'll be able to rework some of this code in the class. OK. 
Okay. That's better. So go to another month, go to August. Uh, no, yeah, I've put that change of view type. Yeah. yeah. So it basically, we sc scrolling those is bringing you down. Well, you're, yeah, click at click at the week in the week mode. Yeah, to today. So that's the that's the behavior I think we want. Yes. Yeah, but it doesn't work for all the modes. Now that's working week mode. If I choose three of the days. That puts me back into a single day. Yeah, <laughs> it's better than it was. <laughs> <laughs> but but you see, um, hmm. yeah, that there's a delay because we're not doing a, a redraw, populate redraw. So that's why when I'm moving, then you see in the highlight appear afterwards. So you probably want would want something maybe just to populate. Could you put that on your list to to address? Yeah, but it but it would have to obviously. But it's got to work in in all uh, all scenarios, if you will. So, I mean, there to today, that's good, and the, the flicker's definitely less. Oh, I don't like the red, though. I've got to admit. Um, but it, in that mode, because that there is not work week mode. That is definitely day day mode. If you were to interrogate that now, that would be day mode. So, what it's going to have to do is have a look at the first day, and then basically emulate so it's definitely going to have to not just have a look at the current mode the current mode it's in but if it's in day mode oh crack it gets worse because you could be on the 13th and the 28th and the 8th now that's still free if i was to go to today it should really yeah, I, I, don't to... that, I don't use that feature though <laughs> <laughs> Uh, granted, but but you see the scenario. If I was there, okay, I'm I've highlighted. Let's say there's every two week, so I'm looking for uh, availability on a Tuesday. So there's there's the next three Tuesdays. If I go to today, should it show me that instead? It's right. move it relative. I would expect it to move it relative to to that. So I'm in day day mode, but I've got three of them by whatever pattern plus seven days so that could be it could be that that plus one plus two days plus three days plus four days okay right. so we can see so if i was to go to today i'd expect it to be 12 14 17 21 basically keeping the same pattern so yeah i could do work on that um okay so i have a, I have a sloppy workaround right now which is get view types select day time and set view type which gives a heart, you know, a, a blink, but uh, that I have a workaround which is good. And if you want to uh, optimize it, that'd be even better. Yeah, I'm just having, so it's a select day time, select day, day, oops, day time, uh, keep view mode. So, right. Uh, now you have to get view type, select day time, and then a set view type to get to, to semi work. To keep um, highlighted position whilst keeping of oh, both whilst keeping both view type and date picker now try to think of uh, what would you call that date picker uh, selections valid I'll know what I mean by that and I've got to go thank you and I look forward to report control enhancements next week yeah, yeah. Uh, raise your hand first. Not raise your hand. That sounds awful. But you know what I mean. So we can jump, jump, jump to you first. And okay, uh, thank you. no problem. Bye -bye. Cheers. So, so David, um, back to the report control. Yeah. yeah. And basically, uh, sorry about that. By the way, uh, it was just yeah, no problem. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Make it work for everybody. Yeah. So basically, yeah. on the report control, going following obviously. Or if Jeff did was to release, or, or, or Bruce was to release, um, the the grouping we could emulate the the sorting via you know trapping which sort order they've just pressed. Don't allow them to uh, select multiple sorts because you would have a problem there. Say you've got you know 
columns A to D, mm -hmm. and they say I want them grouped by A and then B, you would have to have a basically you'd have to have an index which matched every one of the permutations that they could select. So I think you know you could do it, but in reality you might want to limit them on how many uh, how many selections they could have. Does yeah, now Andy from um, Clarion Tools, he has that uh, that query wizard, right? Uh, tool that kind of works with SQL, so you can you can like click on a column and then say you know filter it or sort it, and then um, do another one, and he'll you know append it. You know, ask you you know do you want this one to be appended to the other one so that they're both. You know, like right. if I say order by this, order by that, you know, or filter by this, filter by that, it'll you'll cool. combine those two together and create okay. a new filter. At the end, at the end. Yeah. Oh, oh no, I get the principles behind that. That's not a problem. I was just thinking how you're going to get that into a browser enhancer. I think probably with, well, either his <laughs> or or a combination of, but pretty much I need a, you know, to you need the query statement, right? So really that's all okay. separate kind of from the report control. That's more of the the thing, yes, granted. But I'm just working through, you know, um, not necessarily. You know, we've got to get it emulated in the report control. But right. so you could, I mean, I could uh, you know, help you on that. That's not a problem. You know, you've built some kind of um, uh, cross cross reference queue of which column it is on the browse in the report control and what it is at the back end from an index point of view. You know, you could you could right. soon build your SQL um, order by. That, that, the, that really isn't a problem. I've done that in apps myself and in plenty of times. So that is. Yeah, and I read, I did the little distinct by, you know, when you mentioned the SQL distinct. Yeah. And that guy comes back really quickly, surprisingly, for, like, I can go against, you know, the whole 80,000 record table. 80 or 800? Uh, 80,000. Oh, okay. In this case, I went against an 80,000 record table. Okay. And it comes back with the distinct values in, like, under a second. Oh, that's brilliant. That, well, that that that'd be yes. the mechanism to go, and then instead of us basically um, passing the uh, a queue to go and get the actual data, we'll just put them options straight into the report control. In fact, that we we can open the report control now. Oh, I see what you're saying. Put the, yeah, the list if, into another report control. Yeah, if I was to go. Um, so I just copied in to this week's webinar a lot of the report control from last week. So it should just make things a little faster and easier. So if we go to our inline filter, we'll go inline search. It really doesn't matter. These are unique values. They're passed currently at the moment from uh, basically a queue. So we've got all these in a queue. Now, right. you're not going to... You, you could do it that way, but you, we won't. That would be the to. thing. Yeah. Do I maintain that queue, or do I provide my own? That's no, no, no. We'll, we'll basically. Well, I'll give you. If it hasn't already got it, I'll give you the mechanism to be able to go basically populate that queue directly. So you do your select distinct and get the details straight into that queue. Right. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, oh, uh, I did. I ran it against another one that was eight hundred thousand records, and it comes back just as fast. Brilliant. Okay. Well, that's going to be how it's doing it. That, that's pretty darn nice, though. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking I had to maintain that myself. <laughs> and it was well, going to be a lot harder. Well, you said about uh, doing all that mechanism yourself, you know, I was thinking. Yeah. Um, that, if I'd only be doing that if it was extremely slow at the slight like, distinct. And it's a while since I've done the distinct, I've got to admit. So, I don't, uh, yeah, and I'd rather build on that. You know, I mean, because I just happen to have the facilities for the callbacks and I have information on the fields and so you know normally people wouldn't have all the information so i can kind of get away with it but it'd be a lot better to do this yeah and not have to yeah. to do the distinct one and not have to do any of the specialized back end you know stuff that i got okay so that that'd be uh, uh no problem in fact you wouldn't even have to go via a queue because all the actual thing does underneath the surface if i've got the report control no i haven't i've closed it so let me just um Bring that back just one second. Because, the, and the grouping's kind of like a really extra, you know, that's kind of a bonus. <laughs> I think if I could get through the search and the, the filter, you know, and the, the drop down there of access, that's pretty much the main benefit. 
for the build option. So let's go with the inline. I've, I've chose uh, inline filter. It should have been inline search. They are both identical. Okay. So you would have something which would go and get you your unique values. Mm -hmm. Now in the inline, the inline search, technically what it's doing behind the scenes, I'll we'll just bring that back in, is this um, is a row which which it keeps track of itself, and on that row it says okay for this uh, particular cell so for this row and for this column i want to add constraints so here they are here are the constraints yep yeah so keeping that in mind here just talk you through what it does it knows which for each column that's it oh if it's going to rebuild all so uh, we're not rebuilding all so we're going to go okay clear the search queue for uh, the particular column that we're working on you're going to go through all the records and basically add a constraint. So I we can uh, well you could put this directly into your code. So you can say okay, I just want to basically blow away all the options currently on that, and from your distinct result set, go and do that. So I can remind me kind of like don't don't build them in the first place, but provide the cues for me to put them. You know, so I would do the no, no, I wouldn't do the queues. I mean, you could put oh, them okay. in queues, but no, I would go direct to the report control. So you're bypassing Clarion. You would get some kind of results back via whatever mechanism, you know, the um, uh, ultimate SQL, that would be right. really good, or so, and so on. Or the um, distinct. Yeah, but the, from the SQL query, if you just have your own view, it's only a single value oh, no, to bring you back. So. I probably wouldn't do that. I probably would do the select. So. Like if you do the ultimate, it puts them into a queue for you. Yeah. So or you, you do a, have your own view and bring them straight from that and just do the next. And each one you bring in back, you would call the add constraints. So you call this command. I mean, if you could knock up an example, with uh, a dummy thing, we could do this on one of the webinars where we actually build it. I could pass me a SQL table, database, um, and a sample one with obviously thing, and we could put that together in one of the uh, in one of the sessions. What would be easier on this side? Would you need the, uh, like, would you want the result set? No, 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 just a database. Or right. Just knock up a sample database um, of, you know, just a few columns, because then you can apply the logic to your own application, you know, obviously multiple times over. But uh, we could do some tests. If you can create a, a sample database with a table in it with a load of records, you know, so many thousand. Um, yeah, I've got those. I mean, just property. I can use the live one. It's just as easy as... Yeah, and um, we could we could uh, knock about um, querying that value, just knock up a view, and bring it back, and do the SQL select distinct, bringing back the options, and for each one of them, we'd want this basically particular object, and we're just going to add the constraints, and those constraints you're looking at there are these. So Bruce Banner is one constraint, Bruce Wayne is another constraint. Right. And basically, the constraint okay. means it can only be one of those. Now, of course, what he does after that is just color the data you're looking at. But of course, it's a, oh, brow kind of uh, it's a browse enhancer. So you're only going to have so many records in there. And as they go up and down, you would have to keep applying that same search after. But I think it does it now, actually, on the page, on the um, inline search. Now, it's probably a browse enhancer. That's a, that's a file loaded one. So we'd have to make sure on a, a page loader one that after every reload, it reapplied the search. But I think it would. I think you'd be fine. Or the filter. Yeah. Well, I guess oh, the filter. Oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, take, no. Take, take that. Take that. Just use them so, so after after the, the, the load, it does apply its own colorings. But that would be the least of your problems. Um, mm -hmm. Ah, the filter could be. Now, there's a, B, there's a problem. What's that? Just thinking aloud. Let me just bring that out of the way. Let's let's butcher this one. Because um, you might want a little bit of both. <laughs> in line. In, in my case, anyway, where what you'd want to be able to do is, you know, uh, if you haven't done a search or something like that, you'd want to load it from the SQL. But once you've done the filter, you know, and you've narrowed it down, then yep. you probably want to rebuild them from the report control. You know, from the data that you've loaded, not from the. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you what the distincts or the 
Yeah. So hell like, yeah, no, the, 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 there's, there's no all eight hundred thousand records. You know, then the then you'd use the distinct values, and if you had already done the filter, you know, and you had some subset, then you would load from the report control just for the ones that were well, there. You, you, just want, you want to re rebuild the constraints. The only time you'd right. ever want to change the constraints is if a record change had happened or a record insert or delete had happened. That's when you want to go and rebuild the constraints. If it's just navigating around, you'd never have to rebuild the constraints. Well, it kind of looks like, I mean, in, in Access, and I haven't kind of figured out all the details there yet, but like, let's say you have a big, uh, well, I'm using properties, so let's just, I guess, anything. You know, you're searching for addresses or cities or states, that kind of thing. And it looks like what they'll do is they'll, when you first come into the table, let's say you've got 80,000 records, and if you did the drop down for the filter on the state, it would list all of the unique states, like the distinct values. Yeah. But let's let's say you pick one of those states, and now you've right now you're in California. Then if you went and did a drop down on the city, it would only show you the cities in California. It wouldn't show you the distinct cities throughout all of your records. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. It's you know so that sometimes you would be pulling that information out of the SQL database because because it's all records yeah but if you've already done a filter you know you've already applied the filter and you return like you know a thousand records then you want to rebuild the constraints yes. from the report control itself not from the tables agreed do you see what I'm saying so it you have to be kind of that both methods you know so sometimes you'd be saying hey I'm gonna provide the data and sometimes you'd be saying do what you do normally yep. you know which is summarize the report control does that make sense it does yeah i haven't figured out their exact logic for it yet but I, i'm getting closer you know to what their what their filters are showing after you've selected something okay i'm just doing a i'm going to put this in record and just make it very very simple what were we indexes where there was only date time so it wasn't by that by default so basically So I can see a potential problem here. So I'm just going to put it in record so we can blatantly see. And oh, I've got one. So I've changed this to be page uh, page loaded. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So the sorting doesn't want to be those. Page load is really just the key to getting those a large table open like that. Without, exactly. Yeah, there's no other way to do that. I think you're going to be forced to go down that route, um, unless you. Yeah, I think so. Too. Uh, okay, so come out with some, some way to get a table into memory really quickly. <laughs> that would that be nice. <laughs> so <laughs> now we can see if I scroll down here, further down the page, if you will, thirty-seven. So I don't think that's loaded by default when I go in. Okay. So if I say I want to highlight, it knows nothing off 37 because it's not got it in the buffer. Right. Agreed? So I'm going to say I want 37. Okay. Let me do that again. I'm just going to type in, I want you to highlight 37. No, it hasn't got it. So as I scroll down and come to it, and it has highlighted, so that's yeah. good news for you. So basically, mm -hmm. as the files are loading, it will go and do that for you. So that's one job you're not going to have to worry about, because that wasn't there to start with. I couldn't have selected it. So if I look at our list here, it's not there. So I just manually right. typed it in, but as it came across it via the loading, it does, it does work. So following that, same thing, we'll go to... Well, we'll just turn on that one. We'll turn the filter on at the same time. Enable filter. Um, different roles so we can see what the filter is. And I'm not sure you're going to have a bit of a problem to do with page down because the, the, the data is still in the results set. Okay, so there's that. So now I'm going to say 30, anything starting with one, filter that out. Oh, sorry, no, give me only those. So it's going to... Yeah, it started with one, it looks like, yeah. 
Yeah, but you can see it's. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. It's it's not liking it because it's payloaded, and uh, the, the the raw result set underneath is being changed. Yeah. Yeah. When they pick pick that, I guess you'd have to reload it, or. Hmm. Gonna ha gonna have to take a look at that because the I thought the search would work because you're not basically okay. Take a step back. If you do page loaded, okay, so your file has got thousand records, and your your page is showing twenty. So twenty behind a page behind current page page ahead. You probably load sixty into memory at any one time. So um, if you're doing search, that's fine because them sixty are always going to match the sixty on screen. Well, sorry, the twenty on screen and the bits in memory are always going to match the internal queue to the um, the report control. Right. Now, when you do the filter, what it technically does is it says, okay, just of the ones what don't match the filter, they still there. That queue still contains 60 rows in it, but the one in the report control, it has 60 rows still defined, but only whatever, uh, let's say 15, for example, only 15, which have got the visible attribute set. The other 45 have them uh, visible set to false. I see, but the same data is still there. But all the data is still there, but the, the, when in page loaded mode, as you're going up and down, basically um, it's passing keystrokes back to the actual page loader browser underneath because it needs to know, right, okay, move the thumb bar, go and scroll down, read some more data, so on and so forth. And the, and the, the actual report control is still, uh, the, the actual browse, the page loader browse is still there. In fact, you're physically looking at it. This scroll on the right is your browse when it's in page loader mode. So I'm going to have to do some playing about on that to see how to – that that would be – there is work to be done there to make the filter work in report uh, browse enhancer mode. The search, right. not a problem because the record content and the record, num you know, num record quantity match, but I did suspect the yeah, filter would have a problem. And it's applying it page at a time, yeah, so that's – yeah, so it brings in new page, fine. it applies yeah. the colorings, everybody's happy. We just, you know, we expected that. It's just the, um, yeah, that, that filter. Uh, and the other thing is, we haven't addressed the actual grouping. Your grouping, you're still going to, um, <sighs> mind you if, you, you, if you're creating a thought, oh, no, it's still not going to help you. Your grouping, you still want, you, you want to sort your data in that. Mm -hmm. Would you not? Yeah, you would. Yeah, so of course that's not too bad. You're grouping. You could apply the grouping. But it's only going to group the records that you've got in the but that's, where, that's where the sort, you'd have to, but it would have to be sorted. So you would have to reset the browse, um, changing its sort order, of course, just like you have done a sort. You'd have to re... Mm -hmm. re Oh, there's the thing in grouping, can you? And I think you can actually. I can put it into a different order. Yeah, that's going to screw things up because I can have it grouped in one order, but then actually sorted in a different order. So I'm grouped in from and received, but then I'm sorted in subject. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's a bit of a challenge for this week, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that's what I said the weekend kind of playing with too. I was thinking of different combinations of what you could do, but uh, it's, it's it's kind of a challenge. Okay. Well, we will uh, let's. If you want to, um, we've got we've got to cover Kevin's uh, report control, but it seems like next week's going to be a report control one. But um, if you want to knock a, a database together, feel free to fire it across to us in advance, um, and I'll have a basically put a, a demo, um, cut down demo app together. 
prior to the webinar and then we can we'll, we'll go through the um, the pitfalls of that put some you have an S there. sql database so i can just like export a table would that be the uh yeah oh well, yeah i'll just knock so, well we've got to save you like a database and fire across the mdf ldf um oh, oh i see okay yeah, you know, if you want to just put that into its own and then I can just uh, attach that database and uh, we're, we're both basically working off the same one then. Yeah, okay. Okay, all right, that's a good idea. We'll see how far. No problem. <laughs> and then we've got one last question, which we can quickly fit in. It's report control again, and it's Bijan. So, Bijan? Hi, Andy, how are you? Yes, good, yourself? Good, 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 thank you. Uh, Andy, I have a question on the overlapping events. I know, I think David asked that question last week, but I'm not sure, because uh, I was starting to um, you know, uh, think about like moving my stuff to the report control for um, for the timeline view. I think you call it the tracker, the tracker feature. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, track control, yes. And so what I wanted to find out is uh, if you have two events that are two blocks that are you know on this uh, the same time frame, uh, will they show on the report control or right not? now that's one of the things which we were just saying let me just mm -hmm. open up the calendar no, I'm sorry to... I, I was late to the meeting so I'm not oh, sure. oh no you're, you're okay so uh, yeah. one of the um, let me just get this into just open the calendar up so we can actually explain the kind, the kind of thing but it's basically what we're saying is where you would have something like oh <laughs> can't do it on this because it's a uh, uh, a rough and ready app, let me do it on this one because it's MDI and so on and so forth, right? So we've got um, A at 10 a.m. and we've got B at 10.15. And we'll just mm -hmm. give that another colour to. Now, of course, in the calendar, it's brilliant because all it's done is there's your calendar column and it's just put you two next to each mm -hmm. other. And of course, we could have C and so on in the report control you're not going to have that okay so let's just close that um in the report control you've got one column so it's a bit like the calendar column and you can move these around but what it does is it'll just jump around that one so it's not going to let you overlap so you say you wanted to resize that one it's not going to let you so this is what kevin was asking how are, we going to, how are we going to do that? Now that I think we're going to have to, I can, uh, there were some other requests um, basically to, to do with callbacks. So when this been resized, he's getting quite a lot of requests, uh, events being posted back at the moment. So we're going to say, okay, well, I'll give you one final one. So when you've taken your mouse up, that's when it will tell you whether it's been changed. So rather than changing, it'll tell you changed. So that will help if you think of implementing it, that'll help you uh, there and so on but the way and i think we're going to have to do this is what i'm about doing at the start of next week so it might be an interesting webinar for yourself next week is if we see some kind of block there we're going to have to basically allow this to have a tree on it so 29th gets folded down so you actually have two for the 29th if you will and you imagine if you will that that both of those were the 29th. Let's move all these out of the way. Okay, so both of those, let's say, are the 29th foundation. Then one would appear like so. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so that's the idea. How we actually get about doing it, that's going to keep us. Uh, that's going to keep us yes. entertained. Yes, and then you know, like um, the the hourly. Um, the, the, you know, like I, I show the hours for a particular resource. Yes. Uh, the way that, that I'm doing it now, um, the way I'm doing it now is that uh, it um, actually shows uh, with a color. I mean, I use red, obviously, you know, like you're using red for red, for a particular block, but I use red to indicate that there is an, there's a conflict and right. there's an overlapping uh, event. And so the, my existing um, procedure the grid that shows, you know, the the hourly availability for uh, for a resource, it actually shows red uh, in color. So then they know that uh, they have to deal with that particular, um, you know, um, in this in this case, a vehicle. Yes. They need to deal with that vehicle because there's red in the in the on the grid, and they can double click or they can, um, you know, move one of them around to a different 
time or different. Yeah. So, you know, I think for us, um, we would like to see that um, even either underneath it or, um, you know, either, um, yeah, I guess even for the hourly, it, it could work the same if it's underneath um, that, yeah, but, that yeah. the same vehicle. Yeah, so uh, that's not four. So that's one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. Yeah. So normally you would say, okay, well, that vehicle it's back for a tiny bit, and then it's booked out, and then so these are different bookings, if you will, for hours of yes. the day. But if you did have a clash, then you want to show it there. Now these might all be nice. Let's neutral color. So let's choose our. Let's actually demonstrate. Okay, so that's going to be. Um, oh, that's just going to add a block, right? Let's add in the block. Oh, it's there. Oh, I think that's just demonstrating. Okay. Okay, so that's at random times. It's so here's our here's our blocks, if you will. Okay, so there's your your different bookings for different hours of the day and then if you did have one which was a block uh, uh, there you'd want it to show something like so yes but this would be just one in, in a tree so that'd be like the 29th and uh, all of them would be just one except where you've got a double booking and you want basically to show it in a tree so you can show yes, the that, work. that kind that's of thing that's great yeah, that's in fact, what we're going know, to we, try to achieve next week. But great, that would be um, great. Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. going to be a little awkward. On it, it's nice and easy. Where if it's um, if you haven't got a if you've got a, a block there and you say okay, so this temporarily that says the 29th and it's got the tree and that's great. And we go okay, well let's move that to there, and we can remove the extra roll because there's no more blocking, and we could change that to yellow when we know it's not blocked. All that would work. It's where we need to be able to drag it down to add the block. I think there's gonna to have to be some kind of manual intervention to say, you know, uh, add. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. For that, I will be open to ideas for everybody. <laughs> yes, I think, I think it will work for me, for sure. I mean, the, 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 because you know, we are checking uh, for the overlapping uh, when we are saving the record. Um, so we are already giving the user the um, the message that, you know, this is going to create a conflict. Uh, but it's just nice to be able to see that, you know, underneath is fine. I mean, if it's just yeah. going to be another. Well, it might yeah, be. Because the user gets used to it, you know, after a while. Yeah, well, it might be. Um, yeah, actually, I think you've just answered the question there. If they are doing it via an update form, so they they, they, they put a book in it, don't realize and you they, they get a warning saying this is going to create a, a conflict but they go and still proceed then you're going to go and populate that into your report control now at that point because we're loading we can tell hang on a second there's there's a conflict here so we need to add an extra child role to display the conflicts and we can do that for yes. any any number of conflicts yes but for moving it out of it that's fine because we can move it out of that conflict role and when there's no more blocks on that row, we can delete the row accordingly. Uh, the yes. one thing you wouldn't let them do is drag uh, an appointment to cause a conflict. But I don't think that's any, would you want to be able to drag a drag a booking to cause a conflict? It's bad enough no. that they, yeah, I'm gonna say it's no. bad, bad no. enough they do it in an update form. You probably wouldn't. No, you don't want to do that. You know, so for example, look someone, they're wanting to put this and they say, no, I want it to cover the half an hour of that and half an hour of that no is the answer you wouldn't be able to do it yes and i think you you just you just um um give me an idea and that is um if they are if they say yes proceed you could you could in fact have a different table called a conflicting table and it will give you the the, the, the resource id and then uh the, the well probably the be, it'll be a time queue. I'll, I'll build a yeah. queue inside, and then you can query the queue, basically uh, that kind of queue. Yeah. So, but that's not done at the moment. That's the thing which we, uh, it's, uh, yeah. that's a challenge, if you will. Yes, but I mean, you know, it could even be, it could even be done in a separate table, and so, uh, you know, you save that to a separate 
uh, table, physical table. And then you, when you're reading the, um, when you're when you're building this um, report control grid, you know, based on that resource, you read the other one also, and then you would display the conflicts underneath. Mm -hmm. So you save it, you know, you, somewhere. You have to save that conflict somewhere for later. If they accept, if they, they want to proceed and uh, take take the reservation, uh, you know, so you you would have to save it somewhere. I'm sure because next time you're going to read it, right? I don't I don't think you will. As long as you've got it start and end times, it's day and it starts and end times, and put them into the control and let the control build. Oh, I see. Let the control do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah I see. Okay. I just thought I I, I handle that you know in a separate table, uh, save it. More more work for you. It'd be better the control built the particular right. conflict. So you're saying that the conflict is it's, the conflict is already it's, it's going to be shown to you when you're building yeah. the queue. So you can just okay. All it's right. going to need to know the conflict. It's going to need to calculate the conflict itself in order to know when to add child queue uh, child roles. So what I'm thinking, like uh, on we haven't got any on here actually, but yeah, um, where's our normal report control? the tree do, 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 do. so basically you'd have your trap bar over here but then just the one yeah, we've got conflicts would have to cool. uh, be folded down and the conflict shown on the yeah that, that's that's really nice that would be really nice so that would be even better and let them drag out of that to um, a particular date and time of the other one that's great. rebuild so that's the idea uh, just got to accomplish it <laughs> right yeah, that's going to work for me for sure. Thank you. So, no problem. Right, well, we should start wrapping up. There was one quick one. Uh, I don't know if Greg's still here. Greg, um, just open up the mic. See if uh, Greg is here. He's raised his hand, so I presume he is. Hi, Greg. Hi, Andy. Can you hear me? Yes, long time no speak. How are oh, you? Excellent. Yes, uh, uh, it was just um, got a couple of questions which I've I'm catching up on now, but uh, one caught my eye, which came through. I know you've got a command bar one, which I've got to look at, um, right. which is the newer one. But then you said about the, I think you've got a property grid, which isn't playing nicely with um, the resize, Cape Soft resize right. and split. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Let me just take a quick look. Cause this should be a very easy one for me to at least see if there is an issue or not. But um, under... And basically, it will be under here. It should be under um, tests. So I can't see if we're looking. Completed, and there should be resize ones. Resizing. So we'll quickly look at this property grid. So you've just, am I right in thinking you've just placed a report control on there? Is that correct? Uh, the. Uh Property grid. It Sorry. Is. Sorry, yes. <laughs> property grid. So we've got it right, we've got a property grid here. And we've got resize and split. I'm not sure what the option is. So it's told to do it proportionally, is that correct? What do you use on yours? Yeah, in this particular case, uh, horizontal is move and uh, vertical is fixed. Okay. So let me do that. Well, let's, first of all, let's see, make sure it works. Just it's resize, resize. Well, that's the main thing. So we'll stick with a simple property grid. So these are set and so on. And this is, it's. Yeah, that's, re that's resizing. That's, that's. Good news. So let's change the settings, as you say. So now, what do you want it to? We've got um, your yeah, actions. Yeah, horizontal is none, or excuse me, is move. Horizontal is move. So horizontal it should move. And and vertical should, is none. None. Oh, I, I think you've got resize on you. Um, no, I don't believe so, Andy. On the, shouldn't be. Let me. On the example you sent through, um, you said move and resize. That was a mistake. Ah, okay. Okay, so, that was a mistake. So move and not. Yes. No problem. So when we, it should move when we go horizontal, but we don't want it to do anything if we just go vertical. So, 
So vertical we shouldn't do a bean, which is kind of good. But as we open this, it should go moving accordingly. So, because I'm going to say I added quite a lot of tests on these, so so. Now we're just looking. Sorry. Yeah, and what my uh, screen capture tried to illustrate was that the uh, yeah, if we just the, bring this back the in, the grid was was jumping to the top of the screen there. Yeah, that was my problem. It wasn't with uh, moving or resizing; it was jumping to the top. Okay, let me take an, another look then. So uh, I've just changed that. So let's just put that back to none. Okay, so I've just got one idea what it might be. So agreed. The moving is not sorry. Vertical is <coughs> not in, and moving is is what we want. Right. Now on the initialization of that, you do have report control is one of the only ones. Initialization is during window init. I tried start? both ways. Ah, because I'm going to say let's just try after open because. Um, hmm. Oh no. I'm still getting what I want. Um, pass is the answer because, as you can see, it's uh, it, oh, it's it is doing what uh, what it does. So what it should. So you sent me an example app. Is that a, an actual app I can open here and give a go? Oh no, it's just some code. Oh, that was just the generated code for that particular procedure. Hmm. Um, is there any other attributes on the window or anything like that? Let me go look at it, Andy. This will take a moment to find it again. It is the is it is the Cape Soft resize that went into it. Yes, it is. I have to close a couple of other apps. To get to it, and I think oh no, Clarion didn't lock up. Is it? I I okay. really vaguely remember some of this, but uh, we did have that problem, but it was a long time ago. Are you up to date on the classes? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. So I vaguely remember something jumping to the top, um, but uh, yeah, it was that was mainly to do with command bar, if I remember rightly. But it was a, a long time ago. Okay, uh, currently I have it uh, set up to initialize during window init, but I can certainly change it to after window open. Oh no, no, that's a better one. That's the default. Okay, okay. Um, I don't think there's really much. Uh, do, 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 do. None of these settings would really, um, yeah, all these are just to do with the actual OCX itself. And the code for the resizing, it calculates the class and puts in the, the, the this object into the resizer. So, for example, just do a quick search for resize. So, is it init resize? That's one of mine. There's Cape Sauce Resizer. That's fine. That's theirs. That's ours. So we, we basically, after Cape Sauce to initialize theirs, we initialize ours. Mm -hmm. Let's just jump back to, don't jump down to ours. And yeah, basically, of their class, we've calculated what their class is, and we just set the, stra uh, the strategy of our OCX control. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, of these, because we, we create other controls, um, which 
do with the region, the uh, resize box, and so on and so forth, and they get married on to um, what the youth set of the strategy. So basically, they're set to mimic that. So if you said that to be uh, move and non, each one of these, if they are defined, of course, gets set to move and non. So they should they should marry up. Um, we'd have to have a look on, on yours to see what that is, um, because. Yeah, the two. Is it just one window you're getting it on? Is it on any? Uh, I have another window that is similar, and last I looked at that window, it was working fine. And this is by far simpler. Uh, the window that, that is working mm -hmm. uh, is one of the windows that you worked with me on involving scheduling. Oh, yes, I remember, yes. It's quite complex. This is a simple browse. Uh, I think there are a few tabs. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Just looking. Sorry for, for the sake of everybody. Else. If you don't mind me showing this, by the way. Sorry. No. Um, yeah, it's not by any means um, complicated. What's the control above it? Uh, that's actually an image which is there just temporarily. <laughs> it used to be located elsewhere. It'll go away when the property, <clears throat> excuse me, property grid's working. Okay. So from that point of view, for uh, on yours, are you getting this type of code? Yeah, that's generated. That was the code, in fact, that when I tried to ah. turn off the resizer, that code was causing errors then. Right. Yeah, well, maybe I should. If you, so I take it when you turned off the resizer, you went, you went to... Do, 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 do. Exactly. Uh, in here. Table. Right, I better interrogate that. I'm, I'm probably not doing that, to be fair. Well, no, I'm not doing that if you're getting uh, issues. Because what I do is I, I scan the uh, template extensions and find the ones, so the, the, the particular one for the Capesoft resizer and Mike Anderson resizer and Clarion resizer and so on, find the related one that was needed, and then you scan through the class object to find basically what's the class name of that. Once you've got that, then you can actually go and work on calling its methods. So I just need to interrogate one of its properties. I need to interrogate that property and only put the code in. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's a, a, an oversight. Um, right, well, I mean, it's, it's late in the day now, but yeah, all, all we're really gonna be able to do there, Greg, is I would maybe suggest I wouldn't remove the property grid because that'll be a bit of a thing. But on a side, on a side copy, see if you could remove the resizer and then just re-add it. You know, oh no, you can't. It goes on automatically, doesn't it? Yes, it does from the global extension. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, it does not. That that one is added manually to each procedure, so okay. I can certainly do that. So, so just try it. Obviously, a side copy, but um, try removing that and then compiling, um, making sure, ensuring that you do get the fresh CLW and so on and so forth and that whole the thing, and then re-add re it, give it a particular thing and see if, I, it might be that something's just out of sync on it. Sounds crazy, but it might just be something like that because there's no reason why the, t the two should be out. It's the clarion world, Andy. <laughs> Some things are a matter of faith. Um, yeah, I'll give that a try. If I don't have any trouble, then maybe next Monday we can look at it. By all means, of course. All righty. Thank you. Okie dokie. Okay, well, I think we've covered all questions, covered um, updates. Um, we've gone over time, but that's always a good sign. So um, thank you, everybody, for um, uh, attending. And until next week. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.